everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. And for our first story today, I do want to touch on my last video that I posted about Anomaly's face revealing. For all you Anomaly fans out there who put hate on that last video, I want you all to know, do not worry. Anomaly actually messaged me back on Twitter and said that video was okay to do. And hopefully this one will actually be the last one I do on Anomaly's face revealing for quite some time until it's actually confirmed in the future. And now why I say until it's confirmed is because as of right now, I have no idea whether that was Anomaly or not, whether Anomaly told me the truth. I'm not going to show you guys screenshots of our conversation on Twitter, but I can promise you he did message me back and say it was okay to post that video. So going forward, you guys responded with some great pictures. I'll show you guys the montage of pictures everyone sent me. Jake, this is an anomaly. No, Jake, this is an anomaly. I knew it was the truth. Several people messaged me and said, Jake, I knew the whole time that was an anomaly. But there was also conspiracy theories on the other side saying, Jake, there's no way that's him. Also, one guy sent me this picture. I looked at the eye color, the the, the you know the glasses, the, the rim size. Everything's different. Jake, I know that that's not Anomaly. So conspiracy theorists, I hope you guys all continue to say whether it is or not Anomaly. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. I can tell you right now though, the latest picture we found, uh, all these pictures span from last year to several months ago. The most recent one being this one on screen. Anomaly did tell me about this picture. The two people on the right, including the shorter kid and the much taller kid on the right to pop Anomaly, were actually both fans taking pictures. So he actually did deny the fact that was him himself. And so going forward, I do not know. I cannot tell you guys with any 100% certainty whether or not that was anomaly we have to respect himself and his decision to actually deny that and not bring it back up so moving on whether you guys think it's anomaly or not I cannot tell you guys but that was in pretty big CSGO news the mystery continues and also a more important CSGO news actually back to CSGO centered subject about pro players we do have bodies wall bang on cash many of you have probably seen this shot before I'll show you guys a clip of that after this quick segment here FM Pwn tweeted out this last night as a non you know it's not actually going to be happening 100% just kind of a question for all the pro players out there in the community should we be removing Body's wall bang on cash? Now, obviously, many pros actually agreed and said, yeah, it should be removed because of one main reason. One side, whether it be CT or T, in this case, T side of cash, should not be able to kill a CT member without CT having a chance to fire back. So I'll show you guys a quick clip of that, and it's quite obvious. It is kind of unfair. It's kind of like Dust 2, but in a way that CT and T can actually fire back at each other on Dust 2, so this being way more unfair. So what do you guys think? As a community, do you guys think that on cash, there should be no way to kill your opponent without your opponent being able to see you or kill you as well. I certainly agree with that logic. It makes sense. But here's a clip of Body's wall bang. Will it stay in the game? Snipe. No. On sent qu'il est pas souverain avec euh, avec cette arme. Il est pas à l'aise. Autant le mettre euh, au rifle. Oh, oh Body! Oh, oh, oh. Your device. And that shot done so many times all over YouTube, all over the forums, guys, is why Body's op name is actually this on screen, 149 or give to Kenny S. The French scene has such great op names, so that's kind of funny. Either he takes a shot based off his spawn, or he just gives the op to Kenny S. So that's actually his op name in-game, so that's really cool to see. Also moving on, though, for a brief explanation, if you guys have been watching DreamHack Summer this past weekend, as well as this morning and today, being on one of the last days of that tournament, Cloud9, if you did notice, Shroud and Skadoodle both were not wearing Cloud9 jerseys. Now, it's not part of a conspiracy theory for Shroud retiring. He actually did not wear his jersey because of this. He tweeted out his luggage did get stuck as well as well as Skadoodles and it never made it to Sweden. So that's why all of their things were lost including their Cloud9 jerseys. Not part of some conspiracy theory. So for any of you guys who were worried it wasn't a big issue but that's why they didn't have their jerseys on. Now on top of that as well Cloud9 did go 0-2 for DreamHack Summer. I'll actually give you guys full updates on the DreamHack Summer and spoilers for that tournament later on in the video because as of right now the matches aren't done yet but Cloud9 not looking too good throughout group stages as they did finish out 0-2. They lost to Fnatic. Kind of a closer match on Mirage, 16-12. And they lost this morning to Gamut Gaming. They were actually swept in a best of three. Now, we also had Stewie. Stewie did tweet out this. Thank you to Yeet, who actually DM'd me on Twitter. He actually did delete this tweet afterwards. And it does say you know, it's kind of frustrating to lose because of peripherals. Now, I couldn't tell you guys the context as to why Stewie would say that. We're waiting for update tweets on what that actually meant. Um, so hopefully it's not some kind of event thing. Maybe maybe the event boosts were not working out. And maybe uh, some something to do with peripheral vision, hopefully. But we're re I really could not give you guys any details as to why Stewie would tweet that out and then delete it afterwards. So, and I did want to show with you guys and confirm why Optic Jason R did leave. Now, many of you guys know just a couple days ago, we did have CLG's former member Hayes. He's obviously been Optic's coach for some time now, for about a couple months. He actually stepped down from the coaching role. He took over Jason R's IGL role and he has joined Optic's five-man roster. Going forward, we knew exactly why Jason R was leaving. He has been one of the more frequent live streamers in the CSGO Pro scene. He finally came out on stream last night though and told us exactly why he did leave Optic and it made sense. We all knew this was coming, but I wanted to confirm with all of you guys why he did leave. And it was basically the, the longevity and the security of being with Optic was not worth the suffering of his stream. So here's that clip from former Optic Jason R. I've spent so much time and effort 
on building my stream. And it's paid off so far, mind you. There's a lot of luck involved when it comes to building a stream. This game's awful. Why didn't Do I want to bullet? risk? <laughs> Tell me why. Losing what I've built. Yes, go. Or not completely losing it, losing it, answer. but losing some of it. Oh shit. On playing oh, pro shit. CS. Ooh. Be having to travel, yeah. having to spend RNG time practicing. Boy, boy, that is boy. why I left. Yeah. The the unreliable of the pro CS scene. In very last in today's episode of CSK News, I do want to spoil some tournaments and European minor qualifiers going on as we speak, which actually concluded this morning. So for all of you out there who have not watched the European minor matches or DreamHack Summer so far, I'm going to spoil those matches for you guys. As of right now, though, DreamHack Summer is still going on. The European minor did conclude this morning. So spoilers coming right now. Our three teams going through from the European side to the major qualifier will be Penta, Big, and Dignitas. Now, I actually didn't want to switch that around. I wanted to say Penta, Big, and Dig because it was kind of catchy. It was was actually big though who beat Penta in the finale there they swept them 2-0 team big the story of this European minor as they were one of your top four teams it was Penta big Dignitas and Envious so people thought Envious was a for sure to go through Envious did place fourth though after going to losers bracket final they were beat by team big and team big then swept every single team they actually played they actually swept Envious and they swept Dignitas as well and on top of that they swept Penta in the grand finale so it will be big taking your first place in your first place spot to the major qualifier followed by Penta and Team Dignitas as well, and Envious will not go through. After barely going through group stages, they had a very close best of three with Team Kingwin. If you guys watched that matchup, there were definite weaknesses there for Team Envious. The struggle did go, and Kingwin had their chances to take them down. Now, Envious did take down Kingwin 2-1. They also swept Fnatic Academy in a best of three, but that's really not saying much. They did go through as your fourth place squad, and they were definitely a favorite going into this European minor altogether, but they did, they did fall short and did not go through. So your three teams, again, will be Penta, Big, Dignitas, Envious once again left just so short and I do have to feel bad for Scream and all you Scream fans out there one of the better French players will not be at the Major this year. Now also moving on as well we do have DreamHack Summer going on as we speak and some big surprises as a, as a fact that we're going to go to Group B first. Group B being led by CLG going 2-0. They actually uh, Cloud9 0-2 on the bottom of your group. They lost to Fnatic and were 2 0 by Gambit but CLG playing amazing so far taking down some big top teams. You would not expect CLG to take down. They sit on top of your group and then we'll make the playoffs. Alongside them though will be Team Immortals. Also kind of a big surprise. They've been playing out of their minds lately. They've taken down both SK Gaming, their Brazilian, their Brazilian rivals as well as Mouse Sports, and it will now be SK and Mouse Sports competing to make it out of group stages. So, as of right now, the point of this video being up, I believe SK and Mouse Sports, that series will probably be over. The winner of that group will actually join Immortals in the playoffs. No surprise in Group A, Singularity was, was swept and they're, at, they're out of contention. So, it will be SK and Mouse Sports competing for that second place spot to make playoffs out of Group A, and it will be Gambit and Fnatic competing right now at the point of you guys watching this to, to actually join CLG out of playoffs. So, DreamHack Summer, some big up upsets so far in CLG playing very good CSGO alongside Immortals. So that's going to be it for today's episode of CSGO News. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you all for the great support on this video as well as last video as well as my OP Skins affiliate code. You guys have been amazing as well as in the comment section. Please leave a comment down below guys. I'm going to try and reply to as many comments today as possible. As always, live, love, laugh a lot. I will see you all tomorrow with more CSGO News. If you guys did enjoy, please um, don't leave.